Welcome back to War Academy. We're gonna go over some 10th edition rumors. I hope you brought some salt. You're gonna need it. So the first leak is Space Marines Codex 2.0 in 2023, which I think makes a lot of sense. Now, if we notice the trend that they've been doing with Primaris Marines, they're basically replacing everything in the book with Primaris. So we're not missing a lot of things, but we definitely are missing Jump Assault Infantry. So same with the Shadow Sphere. These are your assault uh, troops that you've been probably not using just throw a jump pack on them and bam this is the new unit we also look at the trend world eaters should be the main bad guys so similar to how death guard were at the beginning of eighth or necrons were at the beginning of ninth i think that 10th edition is going to be very world eater focused with a complete release to their kit and i remember a while ago and this was around indominus time where primaris terminators were supposedly leaked so what I'm assuming happened is they just got put on the back burner, didn't quite get released with everything. COVID probably slowed things down. They just said, save them for 10th. Now this is where I find things a little bit weird where something might be off. So it says that the next 10th edition is gonna feature Blood Angels and Tyranids. So new Primaris Terminators, Death Company, Sanguinary Priest, Broodlord, Macrofex, that sounds cool, Hypergaunts, Zoanthrope HQ. Now, the thing that confuses me about this, I know they're going to want World Eaters as a primary bad guy in 10th edition. And World Eaters are currently, last I remember in the lore, um, leave me a comment if I missed something. But Angron is on Armageddon. So after Gazcall left Armageddon, um, the tear, the scar that's on Armageddon has ripped over and Angron stepped through. So that's actually in the core rulebook where it mentions that. So I'm not quite sure how we're going to be fighting near ball unless the blood angels are on the move but another thing to keep in mind is we do have the new space marine game coming out which looks like it's going to be featuring ultramarines versus leviathan and i believe leviathan is who blood angels are having problems with as far as the primaris terminators go we do already have kind of primaris terminators and aggressors so i'm thinking that these are going to be more power weapon focused aggressors with uh heavier weapons and we also already have the Blade Guard veterans, which are similar to that. So I'll be interested to see what kind of spin they're going to take on Terminators to really differentiate them from Aggressors and Blade Guard. So for the Tyranids, I don't really think we need a new Broodlord. I'm pretty happy with the one we have now, uh, as well as the Gene Stealers. As far as the Macrofax and Hypergans, this sounds awesome. So the, the Carnifax isn't quite as beefy as it used to be. If you play back in the day, like... When I was starting the third edition, fourth edition kind of days, Carnifexes were super, super scary. There are very few things that were bigger than they were. And they've really lost that identity. So I'm hoping for a Macrofex to be maybe something more akin to a Redemptor Dreadnought version of a regular Carnifex. Hypergant sound awesome. So if you any of you were StarCraft Zerg players, like Cracklings were one of the most fun thing to use. Hypergants. The only thing I'm curious about with them, I'm assuming they're going to be fast, but they, just from the sound of that name, it sounds like a unit that's going to compete with Gene Stealers. So it'll be interesting to see if that is real, what what unique thing they could have to really separate them from Gene Stealers and even regular Gaunts. The Zoanthrope HQ, I think, is a great idea. I hate that you can never tell the difference between Zoanthropes and Neurothropes. Um, they just don't look like an HQ unit. A uh, new Zoanthrope, just a specific one for a neuro Neurothrope, I'm sorry, would be awesome. Now, Blood Angels. So, first up, they have the Sanguine Orb. Now they're saying it's a Primarch slash Avatar of Sanguinius. So, what I think Games Workshop... Games Workshop has a little bit of... Everybody wants their Primarch. Games Workshop is well aware that you guys all want your Primarchs. There was an interview with Dan Abnett recently. I think it was on the, the Dark Tide. Um... For a re press release for that he talked about what the what the goals are with space marine chapters and their primarchs it doesn't sound like anybody's going to be getting any more primarchs and i think that's a good thing as someone who's played warhammer for 20 years i've always thought my that lionel johnson is just right around the corner or lehman russ is going to be here any day it's been 20 years it's not happened so what i think if I, they want that as a care announcer. If I always seen that your, you know, salamanders are always just short of getting their relics to resurrect their Primarch, uh, your your overall goal for your army is always going to be just out of reach. If they gave it to you, there wouldn't be anything to look forward to anymore. And they would take so much writing, so much narrative to create 
new wants for your army. One of the best parts of Warhammer is just what we have to look forward to. Now, a way around this is you could do avatars of Primarchs. So I don't know how they'd work that in lore-wise, but they managed with Primaris, so I'm sure they can do it. But if we could all have a centerpiece and this specific unit represents Lionel Johnson, like Belial, you know, uh, Sanguinor representing the Avatar of Sanguinius. I mean, how cool would it be if like Arjax became, you know, the Avatar for Lehman Russ? We would get those awesome centerpiece models that a lot of other armies have been getting, like the Gaskal Thrakas and the Silent Kings to really just make your collection look beautiful, but still let you look forward to having a possible Primarch in the future. Next, like I'm definitely not surprised if Dante has uh, had a model ready since 2019. His model is old, I and mean, he is old. I just hope his new model has a helmet on. Death Company Chaplain sounds cool. Um, I just hope they get some unique type of prayers. If it was a little bit more, uh, a little bit more insanity to the prayers, it would be awesome. The Furioso Dread Redemptor is just kind of expected eventually. I mean, Blood Angels love Furioso Dreadnoughts back in the day, and they're really not here anymore. But making those pure melee death company furiosa that would be cool so the sanguinary guard i'm assuming they're changing because the sanguinor is probably changing so if they really change his look or gear or something they might add that to the sanguinary guard it does also say upgrade screw upgrade screw i'm not sure if it just means they're maybe getting some different weapons or what it is so finally for Tyranids, we kind of already talked about the macro fest, but effects, but we got old one eye. So old one eye is another model that really needs to be redone. You can't really tell old one eye from a pack of Carnifex. He's just got a different face and you can equip other Carnifex to be just like him. It gets a little confusing for your opponent. And if you guys have ever been hit by old one eye, like he is a dump truck. So if you don't know your, if you think you're about to be hit by just a regular Carnifex, I mean, old one eye is like three Carnifex combined and he's buffing the ones around him. Hypergonk swarms sound awesome. We all love the new parasite of Mortrax, whatever it's called, how it just can spawn rippers. Having rippers on a field with Tyranids just feels amazing. So if we could get really cool looking gaunt bases to us to move up with our swarm, that's going to really it should look amazing on the battle to, on the tabletop so then we have new gene Sears, new homer guns i hope they're getting new stats to come with the new models because they're both kind of meh but in your opinion guys what's cooler having that horde of gene stealers run at your marines as your marines just kind of gun them down like movie style fashion or doing the same thing against gaunts that's a that's a tough decision i think overall in my opinion gaunts are probably more satisfying to fight against just because they die easier but besides just termagants man like the horde of tyranids is kind of missing from the meta and we just had crusher stampede like where the hell's the horde like that's one of G uh, tyranids real identities is a massive swarm so overall this is just rumors for all we know this could just be a big troll thing similar to the uh fake data slates that were coming out if this is real I mean, 2023 is still a bit of ways. There's a lot of things that could be changed or be added. Games Workshop does like to write everything very far in advance, though. So if there was a leak, it is definitely possible. Overall, I can't wait to see what the future 40K is going to have. It This game just keeps getting more and more entertaining. I don't really care if I made this video for nothing. I think this stuff is super fun to think about. Hope I gave you something to look forward to. I'll see you in the next video. Before you guys go... Look, scroll down and uh, look how few subscribers I have. It's crazy. Yeah, being a new YouTuber is rough.